so Rare Replay is a very strange game. <laughs> We've had collections before, but they're usually so focused. Like Kingdom Hearts comes to mind, right. where it was you know definitely a value, definitely something to get excited about because we hadn't played these games, uh, and it was it was feasible that you could maybe finish all of the content on the disc in like three four days, maybe a week. Like, if you really commit to it. Right. Where this is insane. I mean, this is like... <laughs> I mean, you can breeze through kind of the stuff we're going to be talking about at the beginning, the early PC titles and NES. Like, you can you can get through at least a, a general understanding of what all those games are. But, I mean, like, Banjo 1 and 2, I mean, that's that's a that's a commitment. That's like 40, 50 hours, you know. Yeah, well, and that's what's, stuff. what's interesting is that, yeah, some of them, like, they justify the cost of the whole collection because it's only $40. So we just got it a couple of days ago. We, you know... Um, 30, Finally, this game, this game has exactly. launched... Uh, it seems bizarre to review it in the traditional sense, so I'm curious, you know, to go through all all, all these uh, and split it up. And Ben, thankfully, you've uh, you've joined us to chat about some of the stuff that you feel passionately about. Yeah. But you got the master list because you're the king of the notebook. Yeah. The notebook. Yeah. I'm calling this 30 mini reviews, but we're not gonna we're not gonna score them. We'll maybe do a thumbs up, thumbs down on each one. Uh, Jetpack was, you know, uh, essentially like a very early arcade style game, and I like it actually. It, 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 you, you're I like it a lot. Too, yeah. yeah. It, it you basically you've got a little man with a jetpack. You can glide upward or you can thrust upwards, and then you can hover at this like you know static level, uh, and you've got to grab the parts of your ship, uh, assemble your ship, and then dump enough fuel into it, and then you get into the ship and you take off to the next level. Meanwhile, all this stuff is flying at you, and you know you've you've got to shoot it out of the way, you know, so you, you don't get killed. It's interesting. Every level they switch up the enemy designs, which also switches the enemy patterns. Um, and uh, it's there's not a lot to it, but it, it's uh, you know it's it's a fun game to uh, to start off with. The second one, though, which is uh, also a, a Jetman game, is Lunar Jetman. Not fun at all. <laughs> it's just not. <laughs> you are supposed to like bomb like an anim an alien missile base, and so there's a bomb, and there's your little truck, and then while you're in the truck, you're invincible, but the truck moves very slow, and then for some reason, it like can't go over small gaps. So like I was trying to cheese it to like. You know, get in and out of the truck to like force it over the gap, which I'm sure is not the way it's supposed to work. But at the same time, there is all kinds of stuff flying at you. And unlike Jetpack, where that was manageable, it just never feels like you can get through the pile of crap flying at you. You think about games today, and you always hear the refrain, especially with like role playing games, right? Where it's like, no, just stick with it. Eventually, it will pick up, right. and you'll get all the mechanics, you'll get all the things. But back then, especially with these kinds of games, it was like, it's kind of just the same thing with more of the same thing added on until you die kind of a thing. You know, you kind of, you, you get the entire picture extremely quickly, which right. just doesn't happen very often today. Game number three. Attic Attack. Really like this game, actually. Okay. Uh, it's... It's essentially like a mix between Zelda and Gauntlet in a way. It's completely top down, and you're going through, um, you know, I don't, I don't know if you consider it a mansion or, or a dungeon or whatever, uh, but you get to pick between a knight, a surf, and a wizard. They have different uh, attacks. One thing that's kind of interesting is that the doors just kind of open and close randomly. Uh, so sometimes you get stuck in a room while enemies are spawning, you just gotta have to survive long enough to get into the next room. And then you can only like pick up three items at a time. So okay. if you, you have the between, yellow, but these are items you use to solve puzzles and stuff. Well, they're, they're like keys, and then there are certain items that you need to defeat specific enemies. So if you, you know, if you got all three keys, you're feeling great until you need to drop one mm -hmm. to pick up something else that you need to get to a different area. Uh, but it's just, yeah, it's it's one of those things where it's it's pretty easy to understand mechanically, and then it's just about you know. Finding your way through the game, but the ricochet is cool. Kind of gave me like a, a Smash TV vibe as well, you know, where you're just oh, stuck in this small place. And, oh, and the other thing I gotta mention you. about Attic Attack: your life bar 
is also a food meter. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have to constantly pick up food as well. And it's, it's amazing because Surf it's like hungry. this very detailed, like large roast chicken on your screen. <laughs> and as it gets lower, you start to see the bones get revealed. Oh, OK. So it's pretty sweet. Like there are just little snippets here and there that would remind me like, uh, like the axe and some of the enemies would remind me of uh, Wizards and Warriors, and even like the font yeah. in some, some cases. And Wizards and Warriors didn't make it to the collection. I think there's like a licensing and stuff involved. Uh, but it was kind of cool to, to see that, and even some of the music kind of went back to that. Saber Wolf is one that is, it's a, it's a bit harder to get into. Um, is it worth it to get into it? I'm not entirely sure. It's, it's, it's similar to Attic Attack in that you're trying, basically you're in a giant hedge maze and you're trying to find like four pieces of an amulet or whatever. But the one thing, the one tip to give you is you just basically have to hold the attack button the whole time because there's just enemies spawning in your face just very unfairly, which is I think is like we see is like the trend yeah. in these ultimate games is just enemies just constantly popping up without any kind of rhyme or reason or warning. Like you move on to the next screen and like, oh, there's an enemy, you're dead. <laughs> so. the, the problem that I have with it, like I, I quit it pretty quickly, is it's, it's not a fair sense of challenge, right? It's not like, okay, I know I'm going in here and I can expect the enemies to attack this way. It's just, the game is just vomiting things at you Especially so you, quickly. you don't know where to go. So like yeah. you'd, you'd, be pre you'd prepare if you're like, I just got to make it down this hallway, get that item and get out of right. here. But you're going down a hallway being like, am I going the right way? I have no idea. Yeah, and, and a lot of this is kind of randomized. Yeah. So like, things aren't always where you expect them. Right, and so what you were saying, holding down the attack button is the most valid strategy you can get, you know? <laughs> Even worse is the next Saberman game, Underworld. Underworld is like this is just really finicky platformer. You have a very particular jump to where like, you know, like, okay, once you jump, then there's like no altering it. And you have like, you start here and you have this angle and you're gonna land there. Uh, but again, because of the vomiting enemies, they, they, enemies don't actually hurt you. But what they do is they knock you around and that's the worst thing when you're trying to like get the right angle to hit that jump right and then something just flies in and and your your weapon patterns are like all over the place you never really know where it's going to fly it's just like oh it went down oh it went you know it's just like uh, i don't know everything is annoying in that game i mean when you yeah. when you were playing it you ran into this sort of roadblock this giant purple enemy and you're like i don't know how to get past this i can't kill this and like instead of being able to kind of think or react to the situation, you couldn't because there were just vomiting enemies that you, you had to deal with. And so you're like, I guess I'll go back because the game isn't f affording me enough space to really like think through this. Ugh, this is just not fun. Yeah. But, but see what they're going for though, and maybe when they got to Battletoads, they found that sweet spot. Right. Just like making it charming and fun and difficult. And, but not something you would give up on. It's like, no, I really want to get past this segment. That's what makes this collection so great and why I love it. Like, you may not spend very much time with Saber Wolf or Attic Attack or a lot of these games, but even if you don't spend a lot of time with them, I appreciate these things not just being Wikipedia entries. That you yeah, can actually right. go and experience them and see a lineage of a developer because I feel like we're so rarely avoided that opportunity. Like, developers are so often defined by their hits, and I think it's way more interesting to see that entire arc. Night lore. Uh, this is one that it was a bit a bit tough, but I think it may be worth putting some time into. It's it's a, another Saberman game, but this one is isometric, which I, I kind of appreciate. That like every one of these games, even though it's the same character, it's like it's it's a different kind of game altogether. And this is like an isometric adventure game. You're trying to work your way through this, this castle, and um, uh, and there's like three kind of you know it's it's basically like the early solve. To, to 3D is in having height and depth and all of that in, in the levels. Uh, and one weird thing, which seems just kind of like a gimmick, because it doesn't seem like that has that much consequence, but there's a day-night cycle, and every time it turns to night, 
you turn into Saber Wolf, <laughs> and then it, and then when you turn into Day, it turns back into Saber Man. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I, I I didn't get too far into it, but I, I feel like it's 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 something that's worth exploring. Uh, and wasn't you know I mean even though it was kind of a pain in the butt to move isometrically, it's uh, like it didn't have the vomiting en enemy problem. <laughs> it's like it's like I can take my time a little bit more. Just like a checkbox on these games, like vomiting enemies. <laughs> <laughs>
This game is crazy. Cobra Triangle is awesome. I just actually saw someone at PAX like a year or two ago playing Cobra Triangle in like those rooms you can wander into at PAX where there's like 20 people playing old school NES games. And I walked by a guy, I'm like, what game is this? You know, because it was, it, unlike any NES game that I'd ever seen, um, just because just, just because of how clean the action was and how much stuff was happening on screen. And like every level is totally different. Like you were saying with the money bags, like you jump into this game and the game's like, just go, now do this, now do this. Yeah. And Because uh, at just... first it's like, oh, this, oh, I get it, this is RC Pro I'm on boats. Yeah. But then no, no the next level, <laughs> you know, you're you're grabbing mines from one side of the map and getting them to the other side of the map while the AI is trying to grab them back AI, from you. Like... Yeah, and then uh, then you're like jumping things, and then there's this crazy like tower defensey type thing going on where there's like a ring of people and boats are coming in and it's trying to kidnap the people and you got to shoot the boats. Uh, and I I didn't realize at first that there's also this gradius mechanic. So like when you pick up these pods then that equates to power-ups. And so you like got to oh, power okay. up your boat along the way. And so you know, if you're properly powered up, once you get to guard the people, then like you're shooting like all kinds of like missiles and stuff all over the screen. No, you, I mean, you're, you're pretty much nailing it. My favorite way that you described it, Brandon, is it's like an eight-year-old made this video game. It's like, well, it's like an eight-year-old explaining a game. Yeah, you know? yeah, like, exactly. They just, they have, there's tangents, and they, they, every, right. every sense is some new element, and you're like, okay, right. I, you know, like, that's the game. <laughs> but it's all, it all just like happens immediately. And each little know? bit is paced, kind of like WarioWare, but an action game, yeah. you know, where it's just you're constantly being introduced to a new concept. Mm -hmm. And I'd never heard of this game. Yeah, I think this is like probably the, one of the biggest surprises of this era um, was a, a Cobra Triangle. Yeah. Uh, crazy. Solar Jetman. Uh, so they so went this back. This is the Jetman game I played. Yeah, went back to the the drawing board with that guy. Um, this is this takes patience. It might actually be worth it in the long run, but it's it's tricky. It's 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 kind of not all that fun as Lunar Jetman was kind of similar, but yeah, you have like a pod, and you go out exploring, and you have to like pick up items and bring them back to your ship, which is very much like the first jetpack, but it's a much like bigger world, um, kind of cavernous, kind of Metroidy kind of layout. Uh, and so the you, trick is not to like smash into stuff. Yes, but it's very out. yeah, it's the thing. It's very inertia based, and and to the point that you know. If you are flying towards the wall and you start shooting your rockets in the opposite direction, it's like you're probably too late. Yeah. <laughs> in a way, it reminded me of Galaxy, actually. Oh Another yeah. Another upcoming game that relies heavily on inertia movement. So. Yeah. So I, I wasn't really feeling it, but I think there may still be some fans out there. Yeah, I kind of dug it. Uh, but yeah. uh, maybe I would like the first jetpack more. Maybe I should go back <laughs> and play that instead. <laughs> Digger T Rock. That one's weird. The premise is essentially that you're clearing out a cavern of jewels, and then there's like this post that when you push it down, then that opens the, the doorway to go to the next level, and you, but you have 60 seconds before the door closes. Uh, okay. So you have to dig your way through, and, 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 and then there are also like uh, rope ladders that you drop down so you don't take falling damage, uh, and then there's dynamite to blast away uh, obstacles to actually get there. Uh, but then it, they kind of they kind of uh, reverted back to the vomiting enemies to where <laughs> there were like these mosquitoes and things that just keep spawning. They're really tough and to fly them. Like yeah. the attack animation just doesn't do it. Like it's not long enough, or like it's just yeah, it's kind of like um, uh, uh, the the other jungle game we were talking about before, where it's like you're just con you're just constantly walking forward, attacking just to clear things. Yeah, but, I, I I thought it was interesting, and I thought I would really get into it, and then got like real tired of it real quick. Yeah, and moved on. RC Pro M2. Uh, yeah, which I never played. That I was never crazy. played that either. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't play it either. It's, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Maybe I need to put some more time into it. I think I still prefer the first one. Yeah, I think, I think they're just trying too hard. You know, they're like, oh, there's all these things. We can make it dynamic, so you're, like, jumping over these, you know. You had to uh, actually uh, buy your upgrades. Areas. Yeah, you can, like, 
buy weapons to always have weapons and pick different types of weapons and and then um, well the thing that looked like four the, the thing that annoyed me was like I was shooting cars and it was like oh well they drop money when I shoot them like no I don't want to drop money I want to Take get them past them yeah <laughs> uh, it, but but the levels were definitely way more complex we were talking about vomiting enemies being kind of a common theme and I think like if you notice our enjoyment of these games we tend to prefer the ones that don't try to do too much at once that are that are very simple that have like a a pretty straightforward objective like attic attack or or jetpack or uh, yeah. it's slalom or RC Perron. Like it's that's interesting. Like because now I feel like the the way games are designed, it's always about cramming as much stuff in as possible when it didn't really work. Like Red Replay. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm not qual I didn't even play this yet. I've not touched Rare Replay yet. But you, you played Snake Rattle and Roll. You played Snake Rattle and Roll. Back in my day, I have played much of Snake Rattle and Roll. Well, how do you feel about Snake Rattle and Roll? You know what's genius about Snake Rattle and Roll? Oh, genius, eh? It's all one map. This whole game all takes place on one map. Like you can see other levels from the levels that oh, you own. Oh, so that makes more sense because I'm like, how the heck do I get that thing? Yeah. So that's cool. It's but all this game one is, world. But, right, but navigating that world is asking a lot of anybody. I Isometric mean, platforming, this, really tricky uh, stuff. Uh. But you uh, eat pellets to grow your tail longer. Okay. Which does what? Which has like? Well, you have to. You have to get through yep. the, to do that to get uh, through the level. You have to be a certain weight to get to the next level. Mm -hmm. There's like a there's a weight switch, and if you don't get up to the bell, you can't open the door. Th this to me got the gold the gold trophy of nope 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 like right when I jumped in I was like no just because the controls don't hold up oh uh, not at all yeah it was oh, okay. just so frustrating well I think it, again it's that trying to play that with a D pad that I way mean, you just add like like can I make this jump should I make this jump am I even going in this direction can I even get to that platform you know like I don't yeah I put enough time into it to where I felt more comfortable but it, I think even if I were playing this on the NES. I would probably be using like the NES Max or something along those lines where I could do, oh. you know, do a diagonal or something like that. I do like the the thing sneaking up on you in the water. That was that was fun. And the freedom, man. Even though I bet they didn't pay John Williams for that thing. Even though they're technically <laughs> ripping oh, off yeah, that yeah, music. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I bet they didn't. They snuck by without getting those royalties. Um, but uh, yeah, so, so that's kind of mixed. I mean, if you're if you're Kyle and you know at the time like you wanted to invest and 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 you you noticed the world and you got to like you appreciated the dynamics more and more, but maybe at face value, just jumping in compared to all the other games, like it is it is the trickiest I think of the games to control of all of the stuff on there, um, and there may be a lot more to it than you first realized. So great soundtrack. Uh, we'll see. Oh, and the soundtrack's good. Yeah. this up with Battletoads. We well, got to, right? Well, Does that work chronologically? Is Battletoads the last NES game? No, 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 no. We, we kind of skipped around to get other people I think RC Pro 2 was the last NES game they made, right? Yeah, yeah. but we'll actually start with what came after that. It was the Battletoads arcade game. Right. Uh, which is kind of weird. It's more like Street it's to Rage. It's just straight beat-em-up. Yeah, much. totally straight beat-em-up. Uh, not very good sound, which is odd. Like, that was a good How do I prefer either. the NES sound to an arcade board sound? But... Uh, but, it, but I had never really, yeah, I'd never really played this before, uh, so it was, it was at least interesting to get in there, and there, there are different animations. You actually get to play as Pimple, which was the big thing with original Battletoads, is that Pimple wasn't playable, he was kidnapped. Uh, uh gorier. Very much. Like you could smash a dude's head in the ground, just boom, 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 like blood is coming on. You're like, whoa, this is Battletoads? <laughs> yeah, anytime you kill an enemy, like, there's just like skeleton left on the ground. Wow. Yeah, and yeah. then, uh, oh, and then the snake boss was pretty cool. It like, comes snake out boss. of the background, and then it starts munching on your guy, and there's all this blood coming out. Of it. Really, a, this is one, re, one of the like, biggest reasons to buy this collection, because there's not any other way to get Battletoads unless you get a cartridge. And, I mean, the thing is, it's just, Every level was, it was like what we were talking about, Copa Triangle. Like every level is very different. But instead of controlling a silly little boat, uh, you have these 
characters with a lot of personality just through their animations. And there's even parts of the individual levels that are crazy, you know, like a weird, a weird I don't necessarily want to call it like a boss encounter, but like, I remember the guy targeting you. You're yeah. trying to jump around and like dodge. Yeah, that was the, totally the a boss. The scope is very cool. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you get, so like, you start off with kind of a normal beat em up level, and then you do the shaft oh where you're like God. wrecking ball things, and these guys come along clipping your We your were legs. doing good, then that's when it started falling apart for us. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get to the turbo tunnel, which is just gnarly. Yeah. It's so fast. And here's, here's the thing Rare Replay has made this way more bearable because there's a rewind button. Yeah. And we were abusing that yeah. so hard. It's like, what is this, Prince of Persia? <laughs> so nice. use, there's no limit on the rewind? You can use that. Really I think cheap. eventually it decided to kill, like, take one of our lives. Like, no, you've used that enough. Oh, OK. Um, but uh, you can use it a lot, and it, it definitely is very much needed for Battletoads. I think uh, if before you go into the level or into the game, you might be able to turn on, like, an infinite life cheat, too. I just, if kids beat that back in the day, like hats off to you. Yeah, that man. game is crazy difficult. Committed. And we talked. We've been talking earlier uh, in this video about the games that are difficult, but like it, it you know, some very, ra very rarely uh, oh, no. are, are worth it to get through that level of difficulty. And Battletoads is definitely, yeah. definitely that game. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, we did the the, the surfing stage. And oh the Snake God. stage is crazy. God. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, and no. also one of the things that we were reminded of is Battletoads is actually harder with a second person. Mm -hmm. A lot of friendly fire. Well, and it's not just the friendly fire, but like both of you are trying to do these precision jumps in platforming, and so if either one of you misses, oh, and the thing that killed us with the snakes. So if we were both together and we both fell off of a snake, we would just fall to the ground. But if one of us fell off of the screen, they would die. It kills you for not being mm -hmm. with the other person. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, Battle is definitely a game you should check out. Probably more than any other game that we that we talked about on this list. Mm -hmm. that, that you should, you know, this is, rare is known for this. This is what if you're going to a restaurant, like you have to get the prime rib. You have to get Battle Toads. Uh, uh, it's definitely a rare specialty. Um, and there's so many more games to talk about. We're gonna do two other episodes where we talk about the N64 era and the Xbox 360 era. But uh, thank you for coming in to chat about yeah, Battle Toads. Totally. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. See you next episode. Yeah.